hair gel is the new birth control. Today I'm going to be exposing the hidden ingredients hiding in popular gels that glue companies abandoned years ago. I'm talking over 25 years ago. And these are ingredients that scientists have shown to be linked to hormone chaos, fertility issues and cancer. So before we even go into this, let's actually look at what hormones are. So hormones ultimately are chemical messages used to tell your body when to make hair, when to have a period, when to rest, when to wake up. Your hormones ultimately drive your life. But some chemicals in certain gels, they're ultimately fake messengers. They wear the same uniform, but they just deliver the wrong message. So instead of grow hair, that same message will say, don't grow hair. Instead of keep your hormones calm, that message will be going chaos. So your body ultimately gets confused. And when your hormones are confused, your body, your skin, your hair gets confused too. So let's actually deep dive into the ingredients which are a cause for concern in mainstream beauty products. Number one is PVP, and PVP is ultimately glue in disguise. PVP is a plastic-like chemical that was once used by glue companies 25 years ago, okay? Companies like Brit Stick. It dries really hard, it dries really shiny and stiff. So that's why most popular gel companies love it. However, it's not the best for our hair. And the irony is these glue companies got rid of using these kind of chemical glues 25 years ago because it wasn't flexible enough and it could crack. They felt like paper deserved better than the PVP that is served in most common gels that we can see. Many popular hair brands still using it till this day. I asked the question, if glue has moved on from using PVP, why haven't gel companies? So that was an easy one, but that's probably the, the least toxic of them all. Up next is benzophenones or BP. And BPs are proven endocrine disruptors. In fact, there was a scientific study where they tested BP to a specific benzophenine on rats. And 100% of the rats in that study had hormone chaos within five days. Meaning BPs or benzophenones are proven to cause endocrine or hormonal disruption. Meaning it confused their baby making parts, their fertility, and also their thyroid. So BP2 and BP3 are already proven troublemakers. And I'm going to put all the references I'm, I've used in the description bar. However, BP4, which is their younger sibling in the same family, doing the same tricks, is still very present in some common hair gels, but we just haven't caught it in the action yet. But then I ask you, if you find, if you have caught two brothers stealing, would you trust that third brother? I highly doubt it. And I don't think it's worth the risk, especially when you look at black women's health and the rates of breast cancer and uh, fibroid issues that we have within our community. It's crazy to think that a chemical like that is still present in our in modern day beauty products. Up next is formaldehyde releases. So formaldehyde releases such as DMDM, Hyde and Tone, and I'm gonna list all of them here. They ultimately stop mold and bacteria from, from growing inside, you know, a jar, right? Which is great because, that, you know, you never really want mold to be growing in a jar of gel or any cosmetic products. For example, it's not a liquid or a solid, it's actually a gas. And it is a very strong one, one that when released, it can get into the air, it can get into your hair, it can get into your skin. And if you're using a gel every single day, you're getting small doses over time. If you think about it, okay, if you get a little bit of formaldehyde today, you'll survive. But if you're doing that over 20, 30, 40, 50 years, then that is a problem. Mind I tell you, formaldehyde actually builds up over time. So those small exposures definitely do add up. And what science shows us is that formaldehyde is classified as a human carcinogen. So what the heck is it doing in our beauty products? Not only that, when it's absorbed or when it's inhaled, because ultimately it is a gas, it can also affect the respiratory system and also your reproductive health over time. So why this specific ingredient is worse for black women is because black women often use multiple, multiple 
hair products on a daily basis not rinse off products i mean products that we're putting layering on day after day day after day day after day so this means cumulative exposure over time on your scalp on your forehead on your hairline and guess what your edges that has a thinner consistency to the rest of your scalp and especially if you're laying your edges with products that contain formaldehyde releases you have a higher absorption risk so it's not just you know one small jar of gel that you should be thinking of. You should really be thinking of the fact that this goes on your hair every single day, right on top of very sensitive and very absorbent skin. So ultimately, formaldehyde releases are like a leaky tap that kind of release poison every single day. You might not notice the drops at first, but if it drips long enough, that cup overflows and that body and your body is that cup. The truth about regulation is that formaldehyde releases in general are still allowed in small amounts, but many countries like in the EU, they're pushing to really ban them, especially in uh, leave on cosmetics because the risk of exposure to a carcinogen is quite high, given that people are putting them on their bodies every single day. And a lot of companies like ourselves um, switch to more safer alternatives when it comes to preserving our cosmetics like, like phenoxyethanol. But cheaper brands tend to use these formaldehyde releasing products because they're cost effective, they're long lasting, and quite frankly, they do not care about your health. So some gels, not looking anywhere. Uh, they use ingredients like DMDM hyd hydantone. And of course, that's also a formaldehyde releaser. And as I said before, it slowly leaks out formaldehyde to, to prevent mold and bacteria from growing, which is great. However, it's not a friendly preservative. It's the same stuff used to preserve bodies from rotting in funeral homes. So every time you slick that gel onto your scalp, there is a little bit of chemical that you're being exposed to. Not just topically, but it can also be breathed in. So I ask you, would you use a product that uses the same chemical used in a morgue? I'm just gonna leave that right there. So finally, we're down to fragrances. So the last cause for concern when it comes to ingredients found in gels and in general, because cosmetics, um, body care, hair care, skin care is parfum or fragrance. And this is a secret ingredient drawer, guys. This one, it sounds nice, you know, fragrance, parfum. I'm, I'm gonna smell great, right? However, it hides a drawer, a drawer of secret chemicals. Many of them are phthalates and Phthalates are ultimately chemicals that allow fragrances to last longer. That's the purpose, that's the primary purpose of them. However, phthalates, as we know, are proven to cause hormonal disruption, just like that BP2 and 3 that we spoke about earlier. But the crazy thing is, the tricks that we have in regulation is that most companies do not even have to list these. So when you see fragrance or parfum on your gel, on your skincare, on your hair, hair care, whatever it is, just know it's like opening up a mystery box of chemicals. Chemicals that are linked to hormone disruption. Baby, your scalp should not be a testing site. So why does this matter? Why is it such a concern? You know, I've been, you know, many say like, well, I've been using this for years and I, and I don't see any issue is, the issue is not right now. It's what may happen, God forbid, 20, 30, 40 years from now. Because when you look at black women's health and the risks, I mean, and the high instances we have of fibroids or breast cancer and all these kinds of things, it's cause for concern. So your edges, especially, you know, your baby hairs are there. They're very soft. They're very thin and they're very gentle, right? So I ask you, would you feed a baby glue, fake hormones or funeral chemicals? I'm sure the answer is no, because you are a person who has compassion and cares about babies. So that's exactly what happens when we put these gels on our hair every single day. And if lab rats showed hormonal chaos within five days of using BP2, imagine what daily use could do to us. So I'm just sounding the alarm. So Janet, gels, they're toxic. You know, and I, I say this a lot. If you're using this, then you're better off just using this because this is actually safer. It's, I think, 90% natural, meaning it uses natural things like potato starch and things like that to achieve the same hold, for example, as the glue had 25 years ago. This is not link linked to hormonal disruption. In fact, it's crazy to me that a piece of paper is deemed more important to protect than our health. But I'll just leave that there. So what is the answer then? If most gels are filled with hormone disruptors, cancer causing ingredients, what do we do? We want the result of slicked hair, but what can
can we do? The good news is natural ingredients like flaxseed, I'm talking nature's glue, can lay, can heal and can hold without acting like birth control. So I will be releasing a flaxseed gel tutorial, but there are dozens online. But trust me, you can find thousands on YouTube. Opt for safer alternatives. And that's also why we're building something amazing at Amino Naturals. And that's why we're building something safer for us, for our edges and for our health. So if you do want a gel that protects your edges and your hormones, then go ahead and click the link in the comment section and the description bar. I'm gonna pin a comment so you can find out more. So it's about high time that we actually disrupt the beauty industry because at the end of the day, they're only gonna sell us things that we buy right. So I challenge you today to invest in your health because it's about high time that we actually put black women's health to the forefront when it comes to formulating cosmetics. And if you are someone who is passionate about your health and building generational health through your family, and then go ahead and patronize us at aminoenatures.com because we formulate products with black health in mind because black women's health shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be the primary focus and reason why we create products for our hair. So the next time someone asks you to lay your edges with uh, certain gels, <laughs> not looking anywhere, just opt for a Pritt stick. And if you think the Pritt stick's a bit funny, then go ahead and click the link in the description bar. So I've been Janet, you guys have been amazing. I'll catch you in the next video. Mwah.